verse. It's a very controversial verse, or it can be. It can be a, be a hard verse to understand. Um, it's commonly taught, or often taught, that um, you see verse you can't and you can't divorce it from verse twenty two, or twenty one for that matter. But you are reconciled in the body of His, that Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, flesh, through death. So we're talking about the cross. Right. Okay. Now that that's your salvation. That's justification right there. To present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. So he reconciled you in the body of his flesh in order that he could present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that pretty much is... But then there's the colon. Remember, we looked last time about the colon. We got the grammar lesson about what a colon means. It's going to be more information. Right. It's gonna, the, 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 next, the thing after the colon is going to add some detail to what's before the colon. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we'll work, work through that. He says... He says, if you continue in the... Oh, look at that. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, actually, thank you. That's wonderful. They will make sure it gets to the right spot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good help there. Good job. My wee little leprechaun here. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. So we just got the delivery brought in, so that that's great. So... You got reconciled. Now, there's a lot of reasons why Jesus saves us, right? We think, pre, first and foremost, is we don't go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean to diminish that, but they're, God, the Godhead's got something else to do besides just save us out of hell, mm -hmm. right? In order for, that, for him to do his plan, we can't go to hell, though. He's got to give us his righteousness. You believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, rose again the third day, boom, that moment. You get his righteousness imputed to you. You're sealed forever. We're going to look at in a minute. And then he's got some things he's going to do. One of them is this. Right? Somebody once said, from God's perspective, our soul salvation is just a little footnote down at the end. At the end, right? For us, it's a big deal. And I don't mean to diminish it. But God's got a plan. Yeah, okay? he can use us now. Exactly. So, he says, in the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So it's commonly taught that, see, well, if you don't continue in the faith, if you're not grounded and settled, and, you, you, and, make sure, and you, if you're moved away from the gospel, then you'll lose your salvation. This is your walk. Well, right, and that's not what this verse is, is, is talking about in, in any way, but we want to make sure that we understand, because there is an if there. And, there, and it is conditional. Sometimes the if, is, if if is not conditional. Look over at chapter three, verse one, and you see it's it's really not a conditional. I mean, it is a conditional, but it's, he's not using it as a condition. <laughs> chapter three, verse one: If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Right? He's not questioning if you're risen with Christ. He, he's making it. He's talking to saved people. He says, okay, if that's the case, and that that, that is the case, then you need to live accordingly. Right? So it's, he's yeah. not really making it a condition it's like if i say if you're in this room you hear my voice right right guess what you were in this room yeah. we uh a man who worked with us in ministry but the, the teacher he he um uh, you hear him so often say there's four ifs yeah ifs. You know? and you have to be careful with them because yeah. sometimes they look one way and then this one it does appear to be conditional i i, I think and, and we want to we want to be honest with the scripture and, and accept that so first thing that let's do is just look over at Ephesians 1. Let's just run a couple of versions, uh, verses to get some things settled in our mind, which I think are probably settled. But Ephesians 1 and verse 13. He says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, with that Holy Spirit of promise, mm -hmm. which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. We've been sealed with that Holy Spirit, and how long have we been sealed with it? Forever. Until, well, no, not... From the very beginning. Right, but until how long? Until the redemption of the purchased possession, right? Yeah. And, until the rapture. Right, correct. We don't need to be sealed after the rapture. I mean, it's not like we can lose our salvation then either, but we're removed from the presence of sin at that moment, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, look at Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, 
whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, so you can't lose your salvation. You're sealed. We're sealed. When a person gets saved, they are sealed until and unto the day of redemption, what we commonly call the rapture. Um, so, again, the issue still becomes, though, then what's he talking about over there? And so if you go back and look at Colossians 1, one thing we need to remember is, what is the context of Colossians? And we need to make sure we read the verse properly, too, because I, I actually said something intentionally wrong here. We didn't catch it. It says, if ye, be con if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say be moved away from the gospel. It says be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Okay, again, these, pe these are saved individuals he's talking to. Right. Look back at Colossians 1.1, 1, 1, or 1.2. And he says, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Well, if they're saved, and if a saved person can't lose their salvation, he certainly can't be telling them, well, if you don't continue, you're going to lose your salvation. Right. And again, he doesn't say, he's not talking about being moved away from the gospel. The whole book, really, we, we talked about so far, is about the hope of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Right? And what, in, in, there's a lot of things that make up the hope of the gospel, but in the context here, look back at chapter 1 again and verse 3. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye have heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. There's a hope that's laid up for us in heaven. Okay, We commonly call that a reward. Okay, and that's really what he's talking about there. Is there's an issue of reward going on in verse one twenty three? No, it's not what I think it is. I know what it is. It's an right, exactly. Let, let's be very clear about that. Hope in the Bible is not. I hope my football team wins. It's it, over in Philippians. He says my my earnest my hope and my earnest expectation. Hope is when Paul says that it's earnest expectation. He knows it's going to happen. He earnestly expects that it will happen. So when he's looking forward to his hope, and in the context of what he's talking about here in Colossians, is the hope that awaits him in heaven, it's going to be that position that he's going to occupy, or we will occupy when we get to the heavenly places, right? We're not just up there sitting on our on our clouds playing a harp. Yeah, waiting for something, hoping something's going to happen. You know, like what, like it, it's like hope is like I have this desire and I hope it's going to happen, but when when Paul's writing here, it's like he doesn't mean it that way. Exactly, he he knows it's it, it, it. It's his hope. It's yeah. it, it's what it's what gets him through the sufferings of this world. Right. I have a hope, right? You know, it, it's um, again, it's just the best. It, let Paul define it: earnest expectation. I earnestly expect that this is going to happen. Um, it, he talks something here about to, about every creature too, but but. When we're here, look over at verse um, 18, chapter 2, verse 18. And we're going to look at these verses probably several times. Let no man beguile you of your reward. See, there's a, there's a reward issue, and that's really what Paul is talking about here. There's an issue of reward that he's talking about. Now, Again, this issue of people losing their salvation, which is so commonly taught in this verse or used, is not unlike, look at 1 Corinthians 15. It's always important to understand or pay attention to the context. You know, it's, it's been said when you're studying right. the Bible, uh, Carlos, hope of what gospel? Hope of the gospel of the grace of God. Paul's gospel. That's, that's the, the only gospel that Paul ever talks about that he teaches is what he calls his gospel, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the glorious, the glorious gospel of Christ, or the glorious gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. And and that that's, that has to do with the church, the body of Christ. Um, but look at First Corinthians fifteen, in verse one. 
He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, verse 3 and 4 is the clearest presentation in the, in the gospel, in, in the Bible, of how the method by which we get saved today. Mm-hmm. Okay? But there's a context to where 1 Corinthians 15 is. And there are people that will come on by and say, well, that's not the gospel. I'm, that is the gospel right mm-hmm. there. But we need to pay attention to what, to, to what we're talking about here. So when he says in verse 2, by which also ye are saved, what's the salvation there? Mm-hmm. Do you ever ask the question about what, is, well, what does Paul mean there when he says saved? Clearly, three and four is you believe three and four and you get saved from hell. Right. But is that the salvation he's talking about? Because now look at verse one. He already told them they've already received it. Right? right. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye received. You have received okay, if they've baptism. received it, and wherein they stand, they've received it and they've stand. They've accepted Paul's gospel and they've believed it. So that's eternal. So now why does he go on to say, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory, unless ye have believed in vain? Yeah, that's hard. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, let's let's go down and look at, real quick, look over at verse 14. Verse 14 says, And if Christ be not risen, then is your preaching, I were preaching vain, and your faith is also in vain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see what he says, your faith is also in vain? They have faith. They've put their faith. They haven't lost their faith. He's not talking to them about not being saved. He's not talking to them about not losing about losing their salvation. So let's see if we can figure out the salvation in the in the context, okay? So let's just go down first of all and go down and see this. Look at verse four. That he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Okay? Come down and look verse twelve. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no, if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ is not risen, then our preaching in vain, and your faith also in vain. Yea, and we are found false witness of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then, not, then is not Christ raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, Ye are yet in your sins. Uh, verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits? For by, since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Uh, verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Look over at verse 29. Kind of an interesting verse, but I just want to you, you see if you pick up on the words. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not? <laughs> right? Um, let's see here. Uh, verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? He goes on to talk about the different bodies. There's one, verse 41, there's one glory. Look at verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Um, look at verse 47. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from earth. As is the Lord earthy. From heaven. Uh, from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. What's the context of chapter 15? What every one of those verses I read had one thing in common. Well, false teachers were saying that Jesus Christ hadn't been risen. The resurrection. Right. The issue in the path in the chapter is resurrection. Is resurrection. Right. Did somebody rise or or didn't? And, that, and he, Paul's talking about Jesus Christ here. And that thing about baptism for the dead. Paul's kind of mocking people. But, but what well, I want you to understand is, is you go through from the very beginning to the very end yeah. of this, and then you go on and see. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not. We all be changed and, and all that. The context of chapter fifteen is the resurrection. Right. Okay. So now, that'll help us with what is that saved there. So now let's go over to 
verse 19. What's the salvation? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men what? Most, Most miserable. miserable. If he didn't right. That's the salvation. If you get, you're saved, you're saved. You, you, nothing can be done about, about that. But there were people in Corinth that were saved. We see that, right? Mm -hmm. But we're denying their resurrection. Now, how that works out in a person's mind, I don't understand. Oh, no. Okay. But the cell, but I guess I do because is there are some people that teach today that it's behind us. Okay. Yes, false. The salvation in the verse is from bad doctrine and mm -hmm. to being the most miserable if we give up on what Paul said. The only reason I bring this is to make it a comparison to what we see over there in Colossians. People will read this verse and say, see, if you believe it, but then you don't believe it, then you've lost your salvation. That's not what he's saying. The salvation is from the bad thinking, the demoralizing reaction to not understanding the issue of the resurrection. And he ends the chapter about the rapture. How many times have we met people, come across people that didn't believe in the rapture, didn't understand the rapture, and they were scared to death they're going to go through the tribulation? And one of the things Paul's laying out here. Well, how do you get saved from that? Understand the issues surrounding resurrection. First and foremost, with who? Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Because no resurrection matters without the Lord Jesus Christ resurrecting, right? Because right? he's, he's, he, he's the first one that was resurrected to never die again. Other people got resurrected, but they died again, right? So, the, the, I, I'm not what I'm trying to do is, is bring a parallel between these two passages mm -hmm. where they have that if, and, and it looks like if you read it real quick and you don't think about what's going on, both these passages tend to, people will say you can lose your salvation. Neither one of them has anything to do with that. Right. That's why you have to understand what the epistle is and who it's to and exactly. what it's about. Exactly. Yeah. Now, be very clear, too. Don't let anybody come around and tell you that chapter 15 verses 3 and 4 are not the gospel because they are in fact the gospel okay okay so come with me back to Colossians and let's see if we can figure out what is Paul talking about so in the body of his flesh to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What he's talking about there is staying in the faith, staying true to what we call Pauline doctrine, right? The unique ministry of the Apostle Paul. He didn't teach the same things that Peter taught. He didn't teach he didn't teach the things that Peter or the Lord Jesus Christ on earth taught about an earthly ministry, to be or an earthly kingdom that was going to get set up. Paul talks about our our us be going in raptured and being ruling and reigning in the heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ in the heavenly places so the hope of the gospel let's go back to that the hope of the gospel is for us to get to the heavenly places right the earnest expectation is that we're going but it's not just to get to heaven what are we going to do in heaven and that's that's an important part of this issue. Um, come with me down back to let's go over to Ephesians one. Ephesians one and verse nine. He says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will in verse 10 is God's will revealed and that's his purpose to reconcile everything in his son whether they be on earth or whether it be in, bees in heaven or whether it is in heaven okay now as part of that program verse 11 we have obtained what an inheritance 
Okay, so part of that in our inheritance, if you see there, verse 11, when in whom, in Christ, you have to be saved, also we have obtained an inheritance. Now that inheritance has to do with being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He just told us what his own will was, to reconcile the heavenly places back to himself using us. So our inheritance has to do with that issue. Okay? Okay. You have an inheritance. We were, and this predestinated doesn't mean he picked you from the beginning of time. He says if you get put in the church of body of Christ, this is what, this is the inheritance you have. I've predetermined that everybody that believes Jesus Christ died for the son, sins, rose again the third day, will be put in the church of body of Christ, and they're predestinated to have part of this inheritance. This inheritance has to do with the reconciliation of all things. Does that make so sense? The, the body of Christ is predestined. Right, exactly. You're a member in that body. Exactly. You're a member in that body. You are predestinated to be part of this inheritance that has to do with him reconciling everything back to in his son. Okay, now look over. Let's get uh, for, go down to verse 19. Chapter, Chapter 1, Ephesians 1, verse 19. Ephesians 1. Okay. This is a prayer. And in verse 19, he says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power... That's the Father, to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought at Christ, when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, mm -hmm. far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Mm -hmm. Okay? When he's going to gather together all things in verse 10. The all things he's talking about is the principalities, right. powers, mights, and dominions in every name that is named. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to reconcile by. Those are the positions of governmental authority, right? We recognize them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Down here in the world to come, in the world now, and in the world to come. Right? When he's reconciled everything back to himself. We have a role to play. What are we going to do in heaven? We are going to rule and reign with him in the heavenly places, judging the angels. Helping Jesus... Sounds like a silly way to say it, but we are going to be running the universe with him. And I don't know. I don't know if, I, I know if "helping" is the right word to use, but you guys know what I mean. Well, if we just stop and realize that it is a body, and we are a member in that body, right? And so it's not as though we can wear back here and say, "Look what I'm doing." I mean, it's the body that, that that's at work. That's right. 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 And you see that down at the end. So. Um. Verse, we just finished verse 21 and hath put all things under his feet that's Jesus Christ and gave him Jesus Christ to be the head over all things mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is going to be the head over all things to the church which is his body he's going to fill those principalities powers mights and dominions with his body which is the church mm -hmm. the fullness of him that filleth all in all he's going to reconcile the. we'll talk about the heavenly realm because that's what concerns the body of Christ He's going to reconcile those things back to us, back to himself in Christ. Our inheritance involves that. He's the head of the body, the preeminent one above all of that. Mm -hmm. His body is what he's going to use, the fullness to fill all in all. He's going to fill those spots. Revelation chapter 12, there's going to be the battle in heaven. Satan's, and, Satan's angels are going to be kicked out, and we're going to take their spots. We're going to fill those positions of authority up there. And it's important to understand because we're going to get to that in the book of Colossians. You know, it's a simple, now that it's been brought to our attention, and we look at it, we read it, and it says what it says, and yet all my life I've never heard this. I've never, as I read it, I never stopped to think. Big, the big majority of people have no idea of when they go that last breath, going to eternity, yeah. they, they figure you're going to heaven, but that's it. They don't think about it. I've right. Never, you hardly ever hear it taught beyond death. No, you're right, because people don't understand it. So much is so much as time is spent on trying to find favor from God to make life here on earth a little better. We're gonna see in the in, I think in two verses, probably in next week, Paul talks about he rejoices in his sufferings for us. Well if he rejoices in his suffering on behalf of the body of Christ, I mean that kind of flies in the face of all the prosperity teachers that are telling you, well, if you do this, this, and this, then God's going to take your blessing away. He's going to bless you and make all this bad stuff go away. 
he left us here. We're going to suffer because right. it's one more day of grace. Why do you suffer? Well, because God extended the age of grace one more day. We're in this fallen world. If Paul is rejoicing in it because he knows that our sufferings is going to gain, in other words, the judgment seat of Christ, the rewards and so forth. Right. So Mm-hmm. Who does Satan want to punish? Who does Satan want to hurt? He doesn't God. care about us, really. He doesn't. Yeah, we're insignificant. God. Jesus. He can't get to Jesus, can he? Jesus, where is he? He's in heaven. A third heaven, sitting in the right hand of the Father. Okay. Second Timothy three sixteen. Where is God manifest on the planet today? In the church, the body of Christ. Right? That's why I go over that thing in 2 Timothy 3.16. And it took me years to come to the conclusion of, of what that is. So, so Satan can't get to them, but he can attack the body. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's, that, that's what he's doing. And that's, like I said, two weeks lessons from now. But we need to understand what's, what's going on. And, and, and the, we talk about this spiritual warfare. That's right. where it is. The wickedness in high places. Mm-hmm. It manifests itself physically. But it's because something else is going on behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you know. And he's Satan is, is is after. And again, he didn't care about any of us. But he did. He, he he what he cares about is corrupting the doctrine. Right. Corrupting the doctrine. That's why I spent time in First Corinthians fifteen today, so that we understand there's a context to what's going on there and what is the cell. Because I, we all we read that verse and we say, yeah, if you you know, we kind of read it quick and say, if if you believe and you really believed and this is what you really believe, then you're saved. That's not really what those verses say, you know. Because how do you, how do you believe in vain? You would, in that context, you would give up on the resurrection. You would say, right. "Well, I'm not quite sure," and then all those things come to you. Okay. Um, okay. So now I want to look at this this issue of reward. You so now let's go to go. let's go to Second Timothy two first. Second Timothy two. Carlos, I see your question. Do I have to be baptized in order to be saved? It's kind of a trick question. Yes, you have to be baptized, but not with water. Right, spiritual. No water baptism. You need to be water baptized by the Holy Spirit into the church, the body of Christ. Spiritual. Right, you don't get baptized with water. It's baptized by the Holy Spirit into the church, the body of Christ. That's right. Yeah. You know, we talked about that at conference, right? I went over and Jesus... Or John the Baptist talking about Jesus said, "I have a baptism to baptize you with, but He's going to come and baptize you with the Holy with the Holy Spirit and with fire." And I, mean, I want the baptism with fire. No, you don't. <laughs> you really don't want to be baptized with fire. But that's three baptisms: water with water, with the Holy Spirit, and with fire. You want the Holy Spirit. Paul says there's one baptism. Well, in one verse, I got three, and then Paul also says you're baptized by, not with, but by the Holy Spirit into the church of body of Christ. So there's a fourth baptism. Well, if Paul says there's one baptism, maybe we should let Paul define to us what the one baptism is because there's another baptism he talks about in the desert when all Israel was baptized into Moses at the Dead Sea, at the Red Sea. Well, the only problem with that is who got wet at the Red Sea? The Egyptians. The Egyptians, not not Israel. (laughs) You know? (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's right. So, and baptism is just an identification. Israel was identified with Moses, right? right? Okay. So, not water, Carlos, but yeah, you and when, and you can't go out and rec- and and say, Holy Spirit, baptize me into the church of body of Christ, and you can say it. But the moment you believe, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit baptizes right. you into identifies you with the church, the body of Christ, which is a body. So that you're in Second Timothy there. Again, I want to look at this issue of our security. Look at verse 11. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 2, verse 11. It is the faithful saying, For if we be dead with him, and we are, Romans 6, we shall also live with him. Mm-hmm. If we suffer, and we do, we shall also reign with him. If he, we deny him, he also will deny us. Now, that, that's the issue of reward. And we'll know that here when we see it in the next verse. When we deny him, when we when we don't stay in the faith like those people in Corinthians were doing, if the people in Colossians do, don't stay grounded, okay, there's a denial. Denial of what? Of reward. How do I know it's not uh, deny them eternal life? Because the very first next verse. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. 
See, once you get put in the church, which is his body, you can say, I was wrong. I want out. I don't believe this anymore. Too bad. And you can't. You're stuck. Because you're part of his body. That's he can't. Another cannot like you did last time. What's that? <laughs> it's cannot. another cannot. Yeah. The C A N N O T. Yeah. Tuesday? Cannot deny himself. It, it, it's impossible. It's not can not deny himself. It's cannot deny himself. Just like when it says God cannot lie. It's yeah. not possible for that type of a thing. Okay? So with that in mind, keep those verses in mind. Look over at 1 Corinthians 3. You come to the judgment seat of Christ. And deny, deny reward is actually deny opportunity for reward. Right. Every, every, and, and it's based on, on doctrine. Every, every issue that a person has, every circumstance that a person finds themselves in life, they have an ability or opportunity to apply sound doctrine or bad doctrine mm -hmm. or no doctrine or no doctrine, or no yeah. doctrine right which would be bad doctrine okay so then, then every what, what it's based on is the doctrinal because you're going to be in the, the position of the power the might the principality whatever it is based on your doctrinal how you get built up in the doctrine here okay so look at first corinthians 3 um verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be man made manifest. Now, the work in the context is, is, is um, ministry. What did you do for the Lord here? For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Before we go on, I want you to see... What does the fire do? Burns up the bad. It tries your work. Yeah. It tries your work. It doesn't try you. It tries your work. You see that in the passage there? Okay. And what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive what? A reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. loss. There's the deny Christ. Deny. Christ will deny you. That's the reward issue. But go on, that he himself shall be saved. Right. Yet so as we fire by fire, you can get saved and live the rest of your life like you're not saved, and you still don't lose your salvation if you're really saved. I mean, then that's God's that's, that's, that's God's, God's decision, not mine. God keeps his promise. So how much God keeps his promise? How much God loves us? How much God appreciates or loves free will? Long his suffering. Long his long suffering. His forbearance. And also, it shows it's not based on works. It, yeah. it shows us truly grace and not works. He saved you by grace. That's yeah. right. It's a picture of the long suffering of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's uh, the forbearance of God. Uh, verse 15 um, If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Okay, so we went through all of that so we can get to the point where we see look, we can't lose our salvation. Right. It's, our salvation is secure. And and why is that? Why is our salvation secure? Because it's in Christ. Right, because it's not based on what we did. Right. It's what based on what he did. Right. It's based on the faith of Christ, not faith in Christ. Now, you, you get the faith of Christ put to you when you put your faith in Christ. But like we've seen, you can decide, I don't want to have faith in Christ anymore, and the faith of Christ is still going to save you. And again, now we're assuming somebody really did believe. And again, that's not my decision. That's God's decision. Um. But yeah, because it's based on his faithfulness, not right. our faithfulness, it is secure. So go back and go back to Colossians. And look at chapter 1 and verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet, acceptable, fit, suitable, qualified, meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So it's God that made us partakers of that inheritance. Right. Right? It's not us. That's why we give thanks to him. Right. And that's, that, there's two issues there. There's the issue of, okay, God qualified us to get the inheritance. That's our that's salvation. But he also makes us suitable and, and 
proper and, and ready to, to go because it's God that does the work in us, mm -hmm. right? We don't go out there and work and toil so hard in the, in the doctrine that we need, you need to apply right doctrine, but it's God that's doing the work in us. Again, right. it, it's not based on anything in our flesh. We can't glory in our flesh at any level, right. which right. is so tempting to do. I know, right. Okay. Um, so it's God that took care of that, takers of the inheritance of the saints in light, mm -hmm. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, hath translated us into the kingdom of his, his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. What mm -hmm. I want you to see there is we are meet, we are suitable to be partakers of the inheritance. Now, we've seen that inheritance, right? Is the principalities, powers, mights, and dominions. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, now what I want you to do is look over at verse 14, chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of Jesus Christ, blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, that's who we've been talking about here, that's what our inheritance is, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he's made a show of them openly, showed the, the, the folly of their decision. He is above them, he triumphed or over them. With that in mind, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. What are all those things? The law. Yeah, they're all part of the law, right? They're all part of Israel's program. Mm -hmm. They're all biblical. Every one of those things is biblical. But they're not dispensational. Right. Paul says, you know, he got caught up to the third heaven and he heard things that were not lawful to speak. That's the verse. Yeah, right. He couldn't say those things if he were still preaching the law. Those are those he could be stoned. Right. For teaching those things under the law economy. Right. Right? You don't three times a, three times a year every male had to go to Jerusalem. Mhm. Mm yeah. I mean, so how dare he, he stand up and say, "Don't worry about that." Right. Yeah. It would be unlawful which are, verse 17, are a shadow of things to come, right? The, that law program will get reinstated after the rapture, but the body is of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. 18. Let no man beguile you of your what? Reward. Reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered and knit together, increases with the increase of God. Don't let anybody beguile you of your reward. But in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. It's interesting too, you see there where it says, intruding to those things which he hath not seen. People saying that they've seen things they haven't seen. Mm -hmm. The new versions will change that verse and be the opposite. It'll say intruding to those things which he hath seen. Oh, that's just blatantly yeah. different. Vainly puffed up by his flesh and mind. Voluntary humility. What is that? You ever think about what that is? That's that's your flesh. Well, I'm just look at me. I'm so humble. Humble and proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> right. You 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 come to a situation, and you just. You go through the motions. I mean, it, it, it's a free will issue, right? Right. But what is, what is it highlighting? Your flesh. Right. Okay, what, what's worshiping of angels? Who did angels... Just the whole satanic realm. Who did angels minister to? Satan. Israel. 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 You're looking at the law. And then you said it also. There's the other side of that. There's the whole... Um, satanic thing mm -hmm. the uh, the horoscope yeah. that's the angels right mm -hmm. that, that's why they built the tower of Babel built a reach up into heaven right they wanted to be closer to their gods the, the gods that Eve saw right okay. you know the, 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 an, the angels, angels right yeah. so what he's talking about ultimately what is that it's just religion mm -hmm. he's saying don't don't let anybody come. Don't let any man come by 
and 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 and, and get you all pumped up in word. in in your flesh, thinking you can do something, or in religion. That's what he's talking about there, the flesh and the religion, two things that are absolutely opposed to grace. Right? God gave one religion, gave it to Israel, called Judaism. He didn't give us a religion. He gave us what? Grace. He gave us the the. Think about it. when 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 Israel in Israel's program they had 635 laws that they had to do. God loves free will so much. He doesn't make you get saved. And if you decide to get saved, he doesn't make you live like you're saved. Now there's an issue of reward, and there's a, and there are other issues there. But so when we come back to chapter 20 or verse 23 over there in Colossians 1. The, it's an issue of reward. Now, there's one more thing there. He says that. So, in other words, Dave, what you're saying is, you won't be presented holy, unblameable, and reprovable in His sight if you can, don't continue in the faith grounded and settled. Right. That's what I'm, and that is what I'm saying. There's an issue of how how it works out to you. Now, you're in Colossians. Look over at Colossians three, verse twelve. Talking to the very same people. Colossians 3 verse 12 he says what put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercies kindness okay there's three titles for the believer right there the elect of God holy and beloved mm -hmm. well he just the verse we're talking about he says he wants to present you holy that's right. one of the things that's in there there's a difference here between our stand our standing before God our standing before God is the elect of God holy and beloved but there's also an issue of what? Your walk. Our walk. Our state. We can't be holy, unblameable, unreprovable if we don't continue in the faith grounded and settled, if we're moved away from the hope of the gospel. If, we're not, if, you're, if you're not grounded in sound doctrine, you can't be who God's made you in Christ. If you're not, if you're not in sound doctrine, then you don't stay settled and grounded in sound doctrine, you're going to live like either you're not saved or live like your Israel. You're going to oppose yourself. Mm -hmm. Let me show you something else. Come with me to 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy. Jesus died for us to present us holy and unblameable and what? Unreprovable in his sight. So how does that work? works like this. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. reproof. Isn't that one of the words we saw over here? Reprovable? Yeah. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, if we don't stay in the scripture, if we don't stay in sound doctrine, we are going to need reproof. It's the scripture that reproves us. Right. So you got to stay in the scripture to get reproved. Yeah. yeah. Properly. That's what the. Oh. That's what we're talking about here in First Corinthians one twenty two and twenty three. It's got nothing to do with soul salvation. It has to do with reward and our walk. We can. It, it, we can't be reprovable. Unreprovable if we're not in sound doctrine. So, like this idea of chastisement, there is no chastisement. It's the scripture that is, is going to straighten you out. It's there's the right. Way. There's doctrine. There's reproof. There's doctrine, information. This is what you need to know. Reproof. You're wrong. And you need to change your ways. And then there's correction. I see where, and that's where. Remember, Colossians is a book of correction. They were on the right path. Paul's just coming along, he has, to, he has to kind of tweak their thing, he has to correct their thinking a little bit on some mm -hmm. issues. Okay, when you have doctrine, and then reproof, think, Gala think uh, Philippians or, Gala or uh, the Corinthians, he went into the Corinthians and said, you guys are a mess. Yeah. You're wrong here, you're wrong here, you're wrong here, you need to change your ways. Well, that's not what the Colossians is, it's just a book of correction. Okay? So you get doctrine, you get reproved, you get some correction, Mm-hmm. That happens by the completed word of God. Those three things become instruction and righteousness. Right, you gotta be in God's word. Now, amazingly enough, and I don't have time tonight, that's how Paul's epistles are laid out. 
Romans is a book of doctrine. First, Second Corinthians is a book. Are books of reproof. Cor- reproof. Galatians is a book of correction, correcting their thinking. They were doing what they were doing well, trying to do the right thing, but he had to correct their thinking, get them mm-hmm. off law and onto grace. The Corinthians were a mess. Right, right. Ephesians is an, is the next great book of doctrine. Mm-hmm. Okay, Romans is the cross. Ephesians is your hope in heaven. Is your hope is what yeah. tells you what's going on with the church, the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Philippians, those people were fighting. They're fighting like cats and dogs in in the assembly. He says, quit that. Work out your own salvation. He has to reprove them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Colossians is just a correction. Based on Ephesians' doctrine. Right, right, right. Then the next great books of doctrine, of course, are 1 and 2 Thessalonians. That's the way God's book is laid out. Now, you can do the same thing with the Hebrew, with Hebrews through Revelation. It's very interesting. Okay? So, where did I leave off there? We're in 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works. Now, there's your definition of perfect, by the way. Is Jesus, I mean, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. Paul doesn't think that we're never going to sin. He says, it, perfect, when he means it is truly furnished into all good works. Great the perfect, the, the perfect man, the, the perfect man, perfect Christian, and I don't like that, that to say it that way, but is somebody that's, that, that's, that's read, it's furnished unto all good works. It's right. a doctrinal issue. With that in mind, come back to Colossians and look what Paul says. When we get down here, Colossians 1, 28, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, that's what we've been talking about, the hope of glory, whom we preach, Christ, warning every man, teaching every man, Okay, preaching, there's doctrine, warning, there's reproof, Mm -hmm. teaching, that's correction, every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man what? Perfect Perfect. in Christ Jesus, truly furnished in all good works, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So, I think that's it, uh, enough for this evening. What I want you to see is this, this is not a, a verse to go to to show that you can lose your salvation. Because one, you can't lose your salvation. But two, that's not what this verse is, this is even talking about. It is an if conditional statement based on verse 22. And there's a loss of reward if you don't stay in sound doctrine. Sound doctrine, Paul describes as his doctrine, the, mis- the gospel of the grace of God. You know that word perfect as it is used there back in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, verse 12 and 13. So that, I mean, it's something that we may not be that complete, perfect, <laughs> but that's a goal. Exactly right. It says, to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness mm-hmm. of Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll go back to verse, the, we'll go back to the third word in verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. Mm-hmm. You're, you're exactly right. And, and, does, does anybody really think that the Holy Spirit or Paul expects that if you that, that a person can study the Bible to the point where before he dies he will live perfectly? No. No. Perfect. Again, we want to, when we talk sure. about Jesus being perfect, that's different than us being perfect. Right. When he talks about it for us, just like you said, it's that issue of being truly furnished in all good works, ready to go out and apply the doctrine and the circumstances of life. What's a good work? Properly applying the doctrine right. to the circumstances of life. Being fruitful, um, having a spiritual. Did you know that? Did you know that saving people, saving souls, can be not a good work? If you do it for your own glory, if you do it for your own glory, do it for your own glory. You got to do it. For, yeah. Um, but also notice here in in twenty eight. Now I'll be clear uh, about this though. They still get saved. <laughs> right, right. Just because your intentions aren't pure doesn't mean that person doesn't truly get saved. But there's also the, the idea of uh, going to the fire to the young way it works. Yeah. You know, it's why did you do it? I mean, did you look what I did? Right. And it's going to burn. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What would you say, baby? Well, just um, in 28, it's very important that um, every man perfect. Mature, Where are you? Uh, Colossians 2, 28, that we can be perfect because we're in Jesus Christ. 
says that we may present every right. man perfect right. in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus. Right. Yeah, that, that's again, that's a doctrinal issue. Paul talks about doctrine when he and, and Paul spends a lot of time correcting our behavior. A lot of time correcting our behavior. We're rascals. <laughs> we're rascals, exactly. Paul spends a lot of time def- telling us how to, to correct our thinking and the way we live because why? We don't we need do it. to do it. Right. right. But you're right, the issue, and, and Paul always corrects it with what? Doctrine. With doctrine. Look over at 2 Timothy. I'm sorry, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4. And then we'll stop here. 1 Timothy 4, verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Yeah. Neglect not the gift with, that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophes- by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, the reading, the exhortation, the doctrine, Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Mm-hmm. Well, Timothy's already saved from hell. Timothy can't save anybody else. He can share the gospel, right? But he can't do this saving. So it, it, it's it's not soul salvation. It's save them from bad doctrine. Yeah, right. There's a lot out there. Save them from bad doctrine. The issue, the behavior is always corrected through doctrine. Not through what I think, not through what I feel, but what from the verses in this book tell me about the situation I find myself in. And how to, you know, there's the thing he also talked about, recovering themselves out of the snare of the devil. That's a real interesting verse. All you hear about is God. God's doing this and God's doing this and God's doing this. And he says, well, you know what? If, if they recover, they can recover themselves out of the right, snare of the God's devil word. by being in God's right. word. It's a doctrinal yeah. issue, right. and and things like that. So, anyhow, the takeaway that was a lot. We spent a lot of time on the A part of a verse, if you will. But I just want us to understand this is an issue of reward and an issue of our walk. Okay, we are, we are before God. We are holy, unblameable, and unreprovable, and that's our state before God because He sees us where. In Christ. In Christ. He looks at us through his son. There's the issue, though, of how we walk. Mm-hmm. How we walk. And the the sight here, uh, the to present you holy and unblameable, unreprovable in the sight, that's an issue of the judgment seat of Christ. And like Len said, all that stuff that doesn't me- doesn't measure up, it's just yep. it's burned up, comes out the other end. And, you know, the verse says, and then shall every man receive what? Praise, Praise of God. God. There's no issue of condemnation because the bad stuff burned up. Right. This is praise. Right. Now, there may not be a lot of praise, but... <laughs> okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we do once again thank you for the evening and the time to study your word. I appreciate that you love us so much that no matter how hard sometimes we try, we can't get unsaved. Um, that that you, just, you can't deny yourself. You save us. You seal us with the Holy Spirit in the Bot Church, the body of Christ. And we can never, ever lose that. We never, ever are in jeopardy of the lake of fire again. But there's certainly an issue of our conduct here on planet Earth. You've left us here to be a witness for you, to be an ambassador for you, to live a life pleasing unto you. And you haven't left us alone and said, just, hey, good luck, hope that works out for you. You've given us, uh, uh, through the pen of the Apostle Paul, the doctrines for the church of body of Christ, the doctrines that we are to apply as we go through this time of grace. We do thank you that you have provided us for that and that it is you that has promised to do a work in us. If we'll just read, study, meditate on your book, on the doctrines in your book, come to an understanding of them, that you'll do a work in us and just just change us. Not through any great toiling or work or sweating on our part, but just resting in who we are in Christ. Again, we thank you for your love, for your grace, in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. Okie dokie. Thanks, Dave. Great to spend. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you.